So if you are a fresher mechanical engineering graduate and your job search feels like throwing darts blindfolded, well, then this video is for you. I've collected a no fluff list of essential skills that you need to become job ready. Now, this isn't just fluff from a textbook. It's a mix of my industrial experience and hundreds of real job descriptions that I've come through for this particular video. But first, let me make this clear. You don't need to master everything that I'm about to mention. Think of it like a buffet. Taste broadly, but specialize wisely. You'll need wide knowledge to open more job doors, but in any single role, you'll only master a few of the skills that I'm about to mention here. So let's start with the non-negotiable skills first. And the first one in my list is AutoCAD and one 3D parametric software like SOLIDWORKS, CATIA or CREO. Now AutoCAD is the universal language of engineering drawing. So you should learn it as your first CAD software. Then pick one 3D tool like SOLIDWORKS, CREO or CATIA and get seriously good at it. Don't stress over learning all the 3D tools. Once you know one tool deeply, you can easily switch to another because these skills are easily transferable. Now focus on making 3D parts, assemblies and turning these parts and assemblies into manufacturing ready 2D drawings. Complete with bill of materials, balloons, tolerances and the whole deal. So if you are not sure where to start, check out sourcecat.com for a comprehensive list of AutoCAD, SOLIDWORKS, CATIA and many other courses. And yes, you can start absolutely for free. Now, the link is in the description of this video. Now, the second non-negotiable skill is design for manufacturing or DFM. Now, here's a story that will make you cringe. A fresh mechanical engineer once designed a beautiful part in CAD software that looked like a work of art. Then he took it to machinist and the machinist took one look and said, well, kid, this would cost more to make than a Rolex and will take twice as long. Well, that's the brutal difference between designing in theory and designing for reality. Learn processes like CNC machining, sheet metal work, injection molding, casting and 3D printing. Understand when to use which kind of manufacturing process and based on precision, stress, heat or cost requirements, you can then modify these parts. We cover all of these DFM or Design for Manufacturing principles extensively in our DFM series of courses. Once again, it's on sourcecat.com and the link is available in the description. Now, the next one in my list is engineering fundamentals like structural analysis, fluid dynamics, material science, heat transfer, thermodynamics and machine elements. Now, I'm putting this third in the list because I'm assuming you learned it already in the college, hopefully while you were awake. If your engineering theory knowledge is hazier than your memory of the last weekend, do a refresher on these fundamental topics. These simply aren't just academic concepts gathering dust. They are your decision-making tools for choosing materials, thickness, manufacturing processes and tolerances for actual part that you will end up making. The next one in my list is shop floor skills like grinding, drilling, sand casting and welding. Now, ever watched the Undercover Boss series? Learning these skills is kind of like that. The executives who succeed are those who understand what happens on the shop floor, on the ground reality. Learning grinding, drilling, sand casting and welding isn't just about becoming the person who will be actually making the part. It's about speaking the same language as the people who will make your designs real. So once you learn these shop floor skills, you'll speak the shop floor's language, understand real world limitations and avoid embarrassing mistakes like specifying impossible geometries or ridiculous tolerances. Now let's move to the next non-negotiable skill and that is GDNT or Geometric Dimensioning and Tolerancing. Now GDNT is the universal language of manufacturing. It's how you tell the manufacturer to make a part exactly like you want, leaving no room for ambiguity in dimensions. So if you ever skimmed job descriptions for mechanical engineers, you'll see GDNT everywhere. So start with the basics of GDNT as per ASMEY 14.5, learn the symbols, datums, feature control frames, then move into tolerance stack up calculations. Think of tolerances like cooking instructions. Too vague and you get inconsistent results. Too precise and it becomes unnecessarily expensive. Once again, everything that you need to learn about GDNT is available on sourcecat.com. 
Link is in the description. Now, the next in my list is a skill that might surprise you, and it's Microsoft Excel. Now, do you think Excel is just for accountants? Think again. Mechanical engineers use it for stress strain tables, safety factor calculators, heat transfer models, shaft torsion tools, bill of materials, report generation, you just name it. You don't need to be an Excel wizard, but you do need to know bare essentials. Excel is the duct tape of engineering. Not glamorous, but it fixes everything. Finally, the last non-negotiable skill is soft skills like clear communication, active listening, a positive attitude, willingness to learn under pressure, and team collaboration. Now, here is what nobody tells you. Technical skills get you in the door, but soft skills get you the job. Now, these soft skills actually helped me get my very first job, even when I wasn't the most technically qualified. If you are a fresher, employers can sniff out team players by looking at your group project experience or club participation during your college time. Now, let's talk about skills that will broaden your appeal. The nice to have that make you stand out. And the first one in this list is FEA and CFD tools. Now, imagine designing a sleek new part and then using software to see exactly where it might crack, wrap, or fail under pressure before anyone cuts the metal. Now, that's the power of FEA or finite element analysis and CFD or computational fluid dynamics. You will simulate real world stresses, heat flows, and fluid movements to optimize designs for safety and cost. Well, NSYS is a major player. Many CAD platforms like SolidWorks or Creo also have built in simulation tools, so you can use either. I'd recommend that you should master one deeply because once you know the principles, switching software is quite easy. With that, let's go to the next one in this list. And this is programming skills like Python, MATLAB, and macros. Now, learning these skills will turn you from a designer to a problem solver. Learning to automate tasks with Excel or SolidWorks macros save hours of manual work. With Python or MATLAB, you can process and analyze huge data sets, like results from thermal tests or vibration analysis. You can even set up optimization loops to automatically find the best design parameters for cost and safety. In short, programming makes you faster and smarter at your work. Now, the next one in our negotiable skill list is troubleshooting plus failure modes and effects analysis or FMEA. So things break, systems fail, designs don't always work perfectly the very first time. Now that's where troubleshooting and FMEA come in. You will use these skills to predict and prevent failures in product design, identify issues on the manufacturing floor, improve equipment reliability during maintenance, and assess risks in real-world applications. These are the problem detective skills that make you invaluable to any team. Now let's talk about the next nice to have a skill, which is lean manufacturing and Six Sigma. Now using these skills, you can streamline production, cut waste and boost quality. With lean's five principles, define value, map the value stream, create flow, establish pull, pursue perfection and Six Sigma's DMAC process, define, measure, analyze, improve and control. You can reduce defects, eliminate bottlenecks, improve supply chains, and even optimize administrative workflows. Now, mastering these can make you the go-to person for process improvement. And finally, this next skill is your secret weapon, and it is job-specific or company-specific knowledge. Okay, so you should tailor your CV to match the specific needs of the job and learn the skills that are mentioned there. As an example, when I was analyzing job postings for mechanical engineers for making this video, I found one role from ACOM which required the person to design high capacity valves and mechanical or hydraulic gates. Now, if you know about these things, great. If not, learn as much as you can about these specific valves and gates and then show it in your CV as well. If you show it in your application, it shows that you understand the company's niche products or systems and this will eventually rocket you to the top of the candidate list. Finally, I want to mention this once again. You don't have to be a master of everything that I mentioned here. Focus first on the core non-negotiable skills, then gradually add specialized ones based on where you want your career to go. So there you have it, your complete roadmap from fresh graduate 
to job ready mechanical engineer. What skills are you focusing on right now? And what topics should I cover in the next video? Let me know in the comments down below and I'll see you in the next one.